about 18 seconds. Uh, the story is called Newborn Thrown in Trash and Dies. I'll read a passage from it and then I'll explain to you why I, I think this piece is so powerful and why it resonates with me. Uh, to set this up a little bit better, he, Wyman that is, he took a story from the New York Times about uh, a young lady who had killed her baby by throwing the baby down a trash chute of her uh, apartment building in New York City. And the baby starts off on the 10th floor of the building and all the way down to the trash chute in the basement of the building, the baby is trying to recall the life he would have had, or I'm sorry, she would have had if she had survived. So it's really powerful the way the author gave a voice to a baby who survived 17 years, or 17 seconds, and was able to describe her dreams and aspirations. Uh, this is uh, floor eight. He called it the floor of facts. I'll read quickly here because I know our, our time is limited. The floor of facts. 17 stories in this building. The address is 2950 West 23rd Street. My mother is 19 years old. This is the baby talking, mind you. The trash chute down which I was dropped is 45 feet from the door of the apartment my mother was visiting. I was born and I will die Monday, August 12, 1991. The small door in the yellow cinder block wall is uh, maroon. I won't know till the last second why my mother pushed it open. In 1999, discarded babies were discovered in New York City's garbage. As of August this year, seven have been found. 911 is the number to call if you find a baby in the trash. Ernesto Mendez, 44, a house, housing authority caretaker, will notice my head, shoulders, and curly black hair in a plastic bag. He slashes open near the square entrance of the trash compactor on the ground floor of this brown brick public housing project called the Gerald G. Carey Gardens. Gardens are green places where seeds are planted, tended, nurtured. The headline above my story reads, newborn is thrown in trash and dies. The headline will remind some readers of a similar story with a happy ending that appeared in March. A baby rescued and survived as she was dropped from a trash chute by her 12-year-old mother. The reporter and Mr. George James who recorded many of the above facts included my unhappy story in the Metro section of the New York Times on Wednesday, August 14th, with this paragraph. A young Brooklyn woman gave birth on Monday afternoon in a stairwell in a Coney Island housing project and then dropped the infant down a trash chute into a compactor 10 stories below, the police said. And that's about it. What's fit the print? My tale, in a nutshell, followed by a relation of facts obtained by interview and reading official documents. Trouble is, I cannot be reached for comment. No one's fault. Certainly no negligence on the reporter's part. He gave me sufficient notoriety. Many readers must have shaken their heads in dismay or sighed or blurted, Jesus Christ. Did you see this? Handing the metro section across the breakfast table or passing it to somebody at work. As grateful as I am to have made my, my story made public, you should be able to understand why I feel cheated, why a newspaper account is not enough, why I want my voice to be a part of the record. The awful silence is not truly broken until we speak for ourselves. One chance to speak was snatched away. Then I didn't cry out as I plunged through the darkness. I didn't know any better. Too busy thinking to myself, this is how it is, this is how it is, this is how it is. Accustoming, accustoming myself to what it seemed like brains. What life is, spinning, tumbling, a breathless rush, terror, exhilaration, and wonder. No one warned me, said hello or goodbye. And of course I was too busy flailing, trying to catch my breath, trying to stop shivering in the sudden icy air welcoming almost a thick, pungent draft rushing up at me as if another pair of thighs were opening up below to replace the ones from which I had been ripped. Okay, the story goes on in that order for another eight floors. The babies reminiscing the first Christmas uh, that uh, he will miss, uh, reminiscing the fact that he would never have a chance to really meet either parent. Uh, and it ends, of course, with the baby dying 
17 seconds later in a trash compact. Okay, Whiteman's story actually inspired a, a piece that I wrote about four years ago. 